Hi, I wanted to do a hints guide to the acid base equilibria one worksheet that uh, you may be working on. So, uh, and I'll just sort of go over these as uh, verbal hints. So, uh, number one, uh, proton acceptor as an abbreviated definition. So, the answer to this should be straight out of the lecture outline notes. Number two, um, you're given a reaction and you're asked to find uh, which of the following statements is true and to do that one. So uh, keep in mind what a conjugate pair is. A conjugate pair of acid and base are only different by one proton. That means one H plus. And um, then looking at that reaction, what I would do is I would do the transfer of the H plus um, to show which one is an acid and which one is a base. So for example, if you have H2O and PO4 3 minus, so as you go to the product side, you'll see that one of them, uh, the HPO4 now has an H plus. So it has uh, received an H plus, um, whereas uh, the other one has donated an H plus. And so when you donate an H plus, uh, Okay, you're an acid, you're a Bronsted-Lowry acid, um, which helps you on number one. Um, now, uh, for number three, choose the strongest acid. You'll need to go to the conversion and equation sheet and pick up the um, Ka values for all of those. And remember that if you are a strong acid, one of our seven strong acids, then your Ka value is very large. <laughs> so... And then uh, for number four, which is the strongest base. Uh, so this, what's very helpful for this is that if you have a, uh, if you are the conjugate of a strong acid, which I will tell you straight away, A, Cl minus. Cl minus is a base, conjugate weak base. Its conjugate acid is HCl, which is a strong acid. And so uh, since HCl, its conjugate is a strong acid. That means it is what we call an inert or very weak base. Cl minus is a very weak base. And if you're a very weak base, what it means is that you are a worse base than water. So if Cl minus ions are in water that does not make any hydroxide ions, therefore you are a worse base than H2O, um, which comes up later too in one of the questions. So then you're going down there, uh, you're uh, looking for uh, weak acids, you're looking for inert acids, and you see water on that list. And so for water, remember water is sort of the barrier between very weak uh, bases in this case, sorry, bases, very weak bases, and inert, or sorry, very weak or inert bases and weak acid, weak bases. So um, yes, so for that one, I would suggest you're really, for number four, you're really looking for the, um, which one is the a weak base. And if there are multiple weak bases, you're gonna have to calculate their Kb values uh, from their Ka values, since those are all ions except water. Um, number five, uh, if you have one mole of barium hydroxide, keep in mind that you can calculate the concentration of barium hydroxide. And then there are two hydroxide ions. So you're going to have to double the concentration of barium hydroxide in order to get the concentration of hydroxide ion. And then once you have that, you can find pOH and then pH. And the pOH equation is negative log of the concentration of hydroxide ion. And pH equals 14 minus pOH. Now for number six, oh, and number, number, number five, you do have to show your work. Uh, that's what that asterisk means. For number six, uh, you're going to have to do an ice table problem for a Kb. And in order to find the Kb, given the Ka, Kb for conjugate pairs equals Kw divided by the Ka value that's given. 
and your k w value, just to be clear, is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. That will allow you to find the kb value, and then you can set that up in a nice table and um, solve for x, and x will be the concentration of your hydroxide ion from which you can find pOH and then pH. For number seven, it's talking about the auto-ionization of pure water, and it says that that is an endothermic process. Um, so this is a little bit about equilibrium constants from some of the previous chapters that we've done. And I will say this, a lot of things build on each other in this course. So uh, no surprise that this comes back to haunt us. So uh, you're going to have to figure out, okay, so where heat goes for an endothermic process. And then you're going to have to figure which way the reaction shifts when you raise the temperature. And then you're going to have to think about, well, when the reaction shifts, which um, what does that mean for the equilibrium constant, which in this case is Kw? And for Kw, um, yeah, I'll let you work on this. Let me know if you have any questions. But I will say this. If it's shift left, that means that you have more reactants at equilibrium, which means Kw decreases um, because reactants are in the denominator. If it shifts right, then you're going to have more products, and more products would be a larger value of Kw or any equilibrium constant. This one just happens to be Kw. Uh, now we're on number eight, um, where what I previously said about the Cl minus ion related to water will help out. Uh, then more about, um, oh, and remember that if you have, if you are a stronger acid as a weak acid, your base is weaker. Your conjugate base is weaker. So that should help for number eight. And, uh, for number nine, the species Cl minus is not a good base in aqueous solution. I will tell you that is true and let you figure out why. For uh, part two, number one, um, so if you want to write the formula for a conjugate base of each acid, you take away a proton. Don't forget the charges once you take away a proton because a proton is H plus and uh, that leaves a negative charge or something one more negative. Um, number two, H2O is amphoteric. That means it can be an acid or a base. You will be writing the auto ionization of water reaction for this. And uh, I would suggest that you then move protons to show which one uh, is the acid, which water molecule is the acid and which one's the base. And for A and B, you can just write one reaction if you refer to and label all of the acids and bases um, well, at least the water molecules as acid and base with the proton moving. Number three, rank the following solutions in order from highest to lowest pH. As part of your answer, write the Ka or Kb value for each substance. So it's a little weird to do. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but for strong bases, um, they're going to have very high pHs. Um, and you can assume that the Kb value, it's, a, it's I don't know, this, the, the Kb value is very large, let's say that, because you get a lot of hydroxide. And that's not an obvious thing to write that reaction, but there you go. Um, and if you have questions about that, let me know. I'm happy to talk about it. Then there will be at least one strong acid, which has a Ka very large, and a variety of Ka's and even a Kb in there. And remember, if you're an acid, your pH is less than seven. Um, and then you're going to have to find which uh, acid is stronger that will have a lower pH um, for among the weak acids. On page th uh, three, number four, there's a table in which I'm giving you the pH value and or the H plus uh, or the uh, OH minus um, and so for that table, what is helpful is to know that, of course, pH is my negative log of the hydrogen or hydroxide ion concentration. Um, and then uh, hydrogen ion concentration equals 
10 to the minus pH. So when you have that 7.2 there, you know that um, it's going to be 10 to the minus 7.20 is going to be the H plus concentration. Um, and you can get the pOH, which is not in the table, but you can uh, take pOH equals 14 minus pH. Um, and then turn that uh, into the hydroxide ion concentration by doing 10 to the minus pOH. Give that a shot. And then last but not least on page five, for each of the following solutions, calculate hydronium hydroxide and the pH. Well, the first one is a strong acid. This is something we generally do in uh, first semester general chemistry, um, which is uh, we go ahead and oh, solve this problem. So there's no ice table here. You know that whatever the concentration of hydrogen ions is, it is equal to the concentration of the HCl. And you can do pH. The next one, that acid is acetic acid, and you're going to have to set up a mole ice table uh, where the concentration of hydrogen or hydronium ion, right? We refer to those uh, equally, but when you do an ice table, probably going to be hydronium, um, is going to be equal to X. So you're solving for X and then plugging it into the pH equation. And similar for benzoic acid, and you just need the Ka values from your conversion and equation sheet for each of those. I hope this has helped.